Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. In this week's episode, I am joined by Jonna Wilford, and we are talking about the integration of fitness with fertility awareness. I do want to give a bit of a disclaimer. This episode is a lot more tailored to our female listeners as we are specifically talking about the female cycle and fitting fitness within that cycle and how you're going to feel throughout the cycle. So just as an FYI, (laughs) and with that, let's get started. All right. We are welcoming Jonna Wilford to the podcast. Jonna, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. Could we just start, uh, or could you just start? Not me. I don't know all that much about you. (laughs) Um, Could you start by giving us an introduction to yourself and um, what you do? Sure. Yes. Uh, So I am married to a wonderful husband. We don't have kids yet. Uh, We've only been married for two years, so still taking our time. You're still in the like um, newlywed phase. Yes, exactly. Like the, like the two years, two between two and three years is when they're like, oh yeah, you're no longer a newlywed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we also just bought a wonderful house in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, pandemic sort of urged us to move into a bigger place, which we did. I'm loving it. <laughs> um, and I'm originally from Alabama. I spent some time in Los Angeles, but really I've spent most of my life in Alabama, and then now here in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, By day, I am actually, I work for the University of Kentucky, and then in my spare time, I teach group fitness classes, and I'm also a a personal trainer, and I really am trying to combine that with my fertility awareness uh, certification. So I I do, it sounds like I do a a lot of things when I say it like that, and I feel like I don't, I don't, I don't feel stressed or anything. So I guess I'll just keep going. <laughs> hey, that's great. I mean, that, that means that like you're in the zone that like doing the things that God wants you to do, like you don't have too much exactly. on your plate. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So what you mentioned there about, you know, kind of connecting your fitness world with your NFP world. I love that. I've just like started recently to see this really coming about, um, and just like optimizing exercise with NFP. So how would you kind of define that, like optimizing, um, your exercises, like with your cycle? Yeah. So I think it's taken me a while to bridge the gap between the fitness, which is definitely not a NFP world and (laughs) NFP, which isn't always a fitness world. Um, and I think I, I, this year, one good thing about this year, uh, 2020 is that I came across the concept of anti-diet, intuitive eating, intuitive fitness. And that was sort of my aha of, oh, okay. So NFP is basically about listening to your body to figure out your fertile time. And anti-diet, health at every size, intuitive eating, intuitive fitness, that is also about listening to your body to figure out what you're craving food wise, what you're craving movement wise. And so I have embraced that this year and I'm doing more work to sort of, uh, that's the fitness world that I am bridging the gap in because that's the fitness world that would be more open to an FP because if they're already thinking about being intuitive by listening to your body, then they would also embrace the, uh, or think about, or it'd be easier for them to think about, uh, listening to your body when it comes to your fertility as well. Yeah, definitely. I can, I can so clearly see the connection there. Um, and it's, it's not a connection. I mean, it's a very new connection. It, it, not a lot of people are talking about it. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool when you really think about it. Um, the idea of like optimizing, you know, how you're going to be working out, how hard you're going to be working out with your cycle. But something I want to talk about, I know you and I agree on this and we disagree with a lot of people on it Mm -hmm. is, uh, is the idea of cycle syncing. So my understanding of the idea of cycle syncing is that you like change your workouts depending on like where you are in your cycle. So like if you're in like your luteal phase, you're going to be doing like less strenuous workouts, different workouts than like, if you are, you know, earlier on in your cycle and you have a lot of energy and things like that. 
And honestly, when I heard that for the first time, it sounded completely exhausting. Like, (laughs) I'm like, I have to figure out like different kinds of workouts and like change them up throughout the month. But like, there's like maybe three different kinds of workouts that I like to do. Like I, I like to go on walks and hikes and like, sometimes I kind of like to run, not really. Um, (laughs) I like to do like X dance exercise. Um, love that kind of thing, but like, I don't want to have to, I don't know. I don't even really like yoga. Like, no. And that's what, so I, I think I've said it's, uh, was harder for me to bridge the gap, even though like the last few years, as soon as I started learning about NFP, like I did search fit, uh, fitness and NFP and I found people like, um, I can't think of them off, but, uh, Stacy Sims is one of them. There's also an app called bitter woman and all of those, first of all, for athletes. So Mm. I feel like cycle syncing is better for like someone who would self-proclaim as an athlete like swimmers runners endurance training things like that because it is better to change maybe athletes have programs you know they have like this is what you need to be doing within like an eight week or 12 week uh cycle and these are probably the best times to put these types of workouts in whether that's endurance training fast, things like that. So I knew those things were out there, but for me, I was like, you know, I'm not like, sometimes I have an eight week program, but it's not for athlete training. It's like an eight week program just to like build muscle or things like that. Right. Like we're not sounds exhausting. (laughs) Exactly. It sounds exhausting for me to like, I already have to worry about like changing. I don't know. I have other things on my mind than like, okay, I'm in my little face. So I'm going to switch this whole program so that these are the best workouts at this time. And I just, I never really like wanted to do that because it also sounded exhausting to me to help my clients by like telling them exactly because each client would be in a different phase of their cycle. And so I'd have to like right. figure out which workout would be best for them in that cycle. I mean, I already do have to individualize workouts to people. And so I don't want to have to go even further by individualizing where they are in their cycle as well. That was, that would be a lot of work for me considering that I also have a full-time job. Um, Definitely. So (laughs) intuitive fitness, I enjoyed more and thought it went better with my philosophy of NFP with fitness, because it's really like listening to your body on that day. And sure, maybe you are just going to switch one workout for another, but it's not a, a whole like eight wick, eight week thinking about it thing it's a well how do I feel today and maybe I do still want to do whatever this program is telling me I need to do but I won't push myself as hard or I know that I can push myself really hard and I won't feel bad if maybe because a lot of programs have like the same workout every few weeks or so right um I won't feel bad if I did this a few weeks ago and felt great and then today I did it and felt really bad so it's more about uh just knowing where you are your nurse your cycle and then just being mindful of that when it comes to your exercise not necessarily changing everything right and and it's like it's allowing yourself that grace because I I do it all the time and you know negative self-talk we all need to stop doing that but yes (laughs) I do it all the time where it's like I'll I'll do a workout Uh, one week. And then the following week I'll do like the exact same class. And the teacher has the exact same set. Like it's nothing has changed. And yet I am like, just totally dying. And I like, you know, I get angry with myself. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like I should be more fit than this. And it's like, no, it's probably actually because my body wants me to rest a little bit. Cause it just worked really hard to ovulate and like mm-hmm. now yeah. it needs to calm down a little bit. <laughs> well, and so that's already in like the fitness world of like, okay, if you didn't do as well today on this run, maybe think about your, what you drank, what you ate, all that stuff. Be mindful about your lifestyle stuff. Maybe you didn't sleep as well, but the menstrual cycle is never brought up. And that is something that would happen or that a woman needs to think about. So, right. Exactly. And like, and we were just talking about this before we started recording, like it makes so much sense. Like it's, it's just like this light bulb that like, how did I not think about that already? I like, I don't even know how I didn't. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it just, well, cause the fitness world is really for men. Uh, a lot of the research mm. is done on men. A lot of, uh, programs are created for men or at least with men in mind. And then they just adapt that to women. So it's, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and, and we see that in like a lot of areas of our world that like something was designed by men for men. And then it's just like adapted for women instead of like realizing that we are fully different, you know, women and men are fully different and that is good. And that probably just actually an entirely different program should be created, not like a modified adapted version, trying to get women to just like be men. But yeah, like, the Stacey order. Sims person says uh, <laughs> women are not small men. That's her. I her love quick. that. Yeah. It's because a lot of programs out there are just, they sort of make it as if the woman is just a small man, but she's not. Right, she's it's like different. It's like, okay, for men, you're going to like do, you know, five sets of these and women, you're going to do four. And it's like, Mm -hmm. well, maybe whatever you're doing a set of, maybe that's not a good spot for like a woman to be building muscle. Like maybe there's actually like a better workout that would be like more optimized for the female body to be doing instead of just like doing less sets. Yeah. (laughs) This reminds me, and this is another part of my story that I'm actually a Catholic convert. And, uh, when I was thinking about converting to Catholicism, the biggest thing that turned me off a lot of people say it's Mary it was not Mary for me actually I fully on board with Mary (laughs) um but for me it was the church's teaching on artificial birth control um and when I did more digging um and also a little bit about the feminine genius and like women can't be priests and things like that so Mm -hmm. because I am a feminist so both of those things seemed very antithetical Theoretical to feminism, Mm -hmm. and so I looked into that. And first of all, the when I learned more about the theology of the body, I was amazed, and I was (laughs) like, "Well, this NFB thing is actually a lot more friendly to women and their cycles than artificial birth control, anyway, and to their health." Because a lot of times, birth control is uh, prescribed for health just because they don't want to do any more digging about what's going on with the woman's body. Uh, So right. Once I found out about that, I was like, oh, okay, I'm full on board with that. (laughs) And then uh, just the idea of like how females are different than men. I've never been like, oh, I don't believe that. But I've also have always like, well, how does that, how does that create like your uh, rules and your hierarchies and things like that? I don't know if I agree. And since I was always into fitness, I started thinking about, well, yeah, women are actually different than men. And so we should train differently. And this is all bringing that back when I was first discovering this idea of like females are different, which the Catholic church clearly says that doesn't mean they're not equal. It just means that you have to treat them like females rather than males. (laughs) Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's like, the church is so much more pro woman than she gets credit for simply because the church says, Hey, women aren't men. Yeah. (laughs) Like, and that's actually an extremely pro woman statement. And yet like the secular world is like, Oh no, 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 no. We're exactly, we're the same. Women can do anything that men can do. And it's like, okay. In some cases, sure. Women and men can do the exact same things. But in other cases, like, I'm sorry, but a man cannot get pregnant. It's just yeah. possible. <laughs> well, and with fitness, even for me, the light bulb was, I was always like, why can't women be as strong as men? Or why can't women mm. like run as fast as men? And it doesn't necessarily, I mean, it might be really harder for a woman to do those things. But the thing is you have to train like a woman in order, in order to do it rather than train like a man in order to get faster or stronger. Right. Cause the, the idea of like, um, a workout program that just like increases every single day, that would work great for a man, for a man who is always the hormones are always, always the same day to day. But like for a woman, it's more like a, a program that ramps it up, ramps it up, ramps it up, takes it back a couple of steps mm-hmm. and then ramps it up, ramps it up, ramps it up, takes, takes it back a couple of steps. And you know that, I mean, I guess that, that really is cycle syncing, but uh, again, that's well, if you're not changing your workouts, it's more like maybe taking a break, not break, but like going easier on the workout right. this week then. Yeah. And 
I mean, I mentioned this before, but I, I think the big light bulb for me was just having that awareness. Um, and that's really what I want to extend to anybody listening here is like, you know, be, be nice to yourself, like mm-hmm. understand that. Yeah. Your workout isn't going to look exactly the same as it did last week. Um, because of that. And then, you know, I, I love this awareness too, of that most exercise programs you're going to find, you know, like a, like a P90X or, you know, especially like insanity. That's like, that was built by a man for yes. men. Yes. Or women. by a man for a woman. It really gets me when a man is creating a program for a woman. It's like, how do you know? What- yeah. <laughs> how do you, you don't understand this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, having that awareness, having that understanding and, um, and, you know, just be nice to yourself, realizing that it's not good. You're not, you as a woman are not going to be able to train mm-hmm. like a man does because you're not a man. <laughs> well, and, and so another reason cycle syncing is exhausting to me is I'm a group fitness instructor as well. And I have regular classes and I can't just like one day be like, I teach different types. So there's a, there's a Pilates that's to music. There's a yoga f- flow that's to music. And then there's a cardio and a high intensity interval training cardio. And I can't one day. So that's the spectrum of what people would say, like change your, your workouts based on these things. Right. I can't just one day be like, oh, I'm not going to teach this high intensity interval training class because this isn't the best part of my cycle. So <laughs> that's yeah. not feasible for me. It's not feasible for most people. And so it is more about like, I am now last week, I taught uh, the high intensity interval training craft class and felt great. And I know it's because that I was in a peak time to be mm-hmm. doing high intensity, intensity interval training. And this week I still felt okay, but I could tell it's starting to be maybe not the peak. And I remember the week before the time I felt great. I was like this, I'm modifying as much as I can. I'm saying it's for my students, but it's really for me because I am not feeling this and I'm not beating myself up about those things because I know, well, this is where I am in my cycle and this is how I feel when I'm at this point in my cycle. Definitely. And that is, I I love that. I love just the idea of simply modifying the workout you were already planning to do. Um, You know, obviously like if, yeah, if you want to completely change the workout you were planning, great, go for it. But you know, it's like, if I, if I plan to go on a run, like I want to go on a run, it's not like, I I don't want to be like, oh, well, because I'm in this part of my cycle, I, I shouldn't do this run now. It's like, no, I'm still going to go for a run, but maybe I'll go for a little bit shorter distance. Maybe I'll just Mm -hmm. go a little bit slower. I'll go for more of a jog instead. Love that. Exactly. Okay. So, um, I, when we first talked, you told me a little bit about something called your body literacy boot camp. I would love to hear more about that. Yeah. Uh, so it is basically a personal training or group fitness training, whatever works for you. I have some small group training as well, but I also incorporate, um, an FP. So either you want to learn it in order to avoid or achieve pregnancy. So I'll give you the rules for that. Or you just want to learn it for your health. And so I really just uh, help you chart your cycle to understand, like, if you ovulated this cycle, uh, if your cycle is healthy. But then also I do teach um, how to chart your workouts and uh, how to look at that to figure out um, if you are in basically what workouts work well for you at which point of your cycle. I teach you like the, what the research says, but I also teach you to chart it on your own cycle or to chart it on your own charts so that you can figure out if that's what works for you. Cause even though there's research out there, it's very new. And also sometimes I find that like what the research says isn't really working for my body. And so I want to know what my body feels like at certain points. And so I want you to know what your body's telling you. It's basically you get to figure out where your your cycle, get to know your cycle, and not just for family planning, but also uh, to really create an exercise routine that works for you. Yeah, and it's it's really jumping into the like holistic approach um, mm-hmm. to just your your personhood, your womanhood. Um, you know, NFP as we've as we've mentioned so many times, like. NFP, the term itself, sure, that's natural family planning, but fertility awareness 
overall is for so much more than just planning your family. (laughs) That's what I am passionate. Like I do teach women how to either avoid or achieve pregnancy with uh, natural family planning, but my passion is really uh, learning natural family planning for help. And so that means it's not just for women who are engaged. It's not just for women who are getting married. It's for people who are single. It's for people who maybe aren't engaged yet. It's for teenagers. It's all those things. Yeah. It's for anyone, uh, who is cycling. Like if you have a cycle, let's chart it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. So actually in charting your cycle will help with your fitness and your health in general, just because a lot of times women are engaging, and this goes back to the intuitive fitness, intuitive eating, they're engaging in practices that are actually not healthy for them Mm. in the desire to look a certain way, to lose weight, all those things. And so charting your cycle will tell you probably earlier than losing your period if something's wrong, but it will also tell you of course, that you have lost your period and you're not pregnant. Um, It's maybe because you're not eating enough or you're exercising too hard, uh, things like that. So I also enjoy the cycle charting just to let, to make sure that uh, the program I've created for people, that the program that someone has chosen for themselves is not too much and unhealthy for their body. Definitely. And that's huge because and and we've talked about this on the podcast before and, and we will talk about it in the future. Like ovulation is extremely important for your health. Um, like that is a, that is a sign of a healthy body. And so, you know, if you're working so hard or you're not eating enough and your body stops cycling, um, your body just went into like complete survival mode and that's not a good sign. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so I don't work, uh, with eating, eating disorder recovery, um, just cause I mean, I, I could, but I would have to tell them I'm not like certified to do it to you. So you'll just be having me as someone who's here. Um, but I actually, I mean, I, when I was in college, I had disordered eating. It wasn't a clinical diagnosis of like anorexia or, uh, eating disorder or anything. It was definitely disordered. Uh, It started in college. I would say I still actually am just now starting to get out of it because intuitive eating. Um, But there are a lot of women who have disordered eating or disordered relationship with exercise that maybe they haven't lost their period because that seems to be like the red flag that most people know. Oh, I've lost my period. So something is wrong. But in your chart, you can also see stuff that maybe you haven't lost your period, but it's shorter or uh, you're having a lot of spotting or things like that, that will tell you that your eating maybe not, isn't clinically diagnosable, but you're not engaging in healthy eating and exercise practices. Right. And this is definitely something, if you're listening to this and you're like, huh, I wonder like about this X, Y, Z of my cycle, um, please go talk to your instructor or your practitioner. They are the ones that are going to have that information or they're going to find it for you from a reputable source Um, because the internet has all sorts of things. And, you know, it's sometimes really hard to find good information on that. So please talk to your, um, your natural family planning instructor or fertility awareness method instructor because, um, they, they will be the right source for you to go to for that info. For sure. Awesome. Um, so what, uh, we, we talked a little bit about kind of ideas of like modifying your exercise and stuff like that, but what specific tips do you have for someone who's like, okay, I want to, this, this sounds awesome. Like I'm totally on board. I want to, uh, get, get my head wrapped around this. What specific tips do you have for someone who is, uh, thinking that that sounds interesting, but also that like cycle syncing sounds exhausting (laughs) (laughs) for sure. So definitely if you're already treading your cycle, add a way to add your, whatever workout you're doing and how you felt because of that and how long you worked out for. Uh, so all those things sort of tell you, Like, for example, I always, I actually have categories of like, okay, I did weights today. I did flexibility training today. I did cardio today. And then I also do like, so I say how long I did them for, but then I have like a little emoji in my face because I use read your body, an emoji that says, oh, I felt great today. And then there's, there's one emoji I use. I haven't actually had to use it in a while of like eyes crossed the dead emoji. I was like, (laughs) did not feel good today. 
So that's a really simple, if you're already tracking your fertility signs, you can also just add your workouts and how you felt. I know a lot of people do their workouts, but they don't necessarily maybe put how they felt. And if you keep tracking that, you'll be able to see a pattern maybe. Um, If you're not charting your cycle, then I would say start charting your cycle. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Go find an instructor. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Don't, I mean, you can't learn it on your own, but it's not re- really the best. Although if you're doing it for your fitness, I guess it's not as bad. If you're doing it for family planning, please do not do it by yourself. Please find an instructor. <laughs> right. Well, and something important to note, um, is like th- this doesn't work if you are on a hormonal method of birth. Yes. Control. And like, that's, it's, it was also very hard for me. I mean, people always say niche down anyway. So find your, your audience. And it's hard for me because I want to reach the people who are on birth control for maybe a health reason, or I know so many women who are on it and they're like, I really hate being on it. Uh, but I feel like there's no other option and I want to reach those women. So that's why another reason I want to combine the fitness and fertility is maybe if I'm talking about both, then people will realize they can get off. But I guess I would say primarily the people I work with are people who are not on any sort of hormonal contraceptive, which is hard for me because I don't want to only work with them, but I can't really work with you if you're on hormonal contraceptives. So. <laughs> right. You know, like what we're specifically talking about is, you know, listening to your body and listening to like whatever hormone is, um, you know, acting at that moment. And so when you're on hormonal birth control, you are a flat line of a synthetic estrogen and progestin. So you, you don't have the like roller coaster of hormones that would affect your mood and ability to in energy in the way that we're talking about. Yeah. And yeah, let me correct that. So I do work with fitness wise with women on hormonal birth control because I do intuitive fitness. So it's more about listening to your body, but I won't be able to, you won't be able to like figure out a pattern or anything because it's not really a pattern because you're the same. I mean, there might be some, there's some people, this is, there are some people who do it by the moon, which is too woo woo for me, but Mm, that's an option. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's probably a little, uh, It's a little new agey for me. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. I mean, there is the theory that like. If you're already thinking about intuitive fitness, like, okay, how, what, what do I want for my workout today? Then hopefully eventually if I'm working with those people and I'm telling them and they're hearing from me about the cycle syncing stuff, then then maybe they'll be like, oh, maybe I do want to be off so I can really be in tune with my body. Yeah. What a great, um, you know, way to introduce people to fertility awareness because, um, yeah, I mean, fertility awareness just gets this, like this reputation of like, oh, it's that Catholic thing and it doesn't work. And obviously we've talked ad nauseum about how it definitely (laughs) does work. We know that, but also like, yes, it beautifully like integrates with our Catholic church teachings, Um, and yes, it is a very Catholic thing, but it's not just for Catholics. Like (laughs) it's for women. (laughs) Since I'm a convert, it's almost like, I think we've talked about this before evangelism for me. Not that I want to say that, but like, this was a thing that held me back from being Catholic. And when I dove more into it, I was like, oh, this is, this is a cool church. Right. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I mean, and there's so many misconceptions around Catholics. That's, right. that's the, the short <laughs> end. And so if people actually started learning more about what they think they know about Catholicism, then I think it'd be like me. I would like, I was like, oh, this is not what I thought Catholicism was. Oh yeah. And I feel like we hear that all the time. Um, just from, you know, people who either like fell away or, or people who have converted like yourself, it's like, oh, well, I was super against the Catholic church because of X, Y, Z. And then I learned that X, Y, Z were not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yes. Oh, I totally agree. So, um, yeah, this has been so fun. Um, I want to just kind of close out with just a couple, like we talked about so many things. I want to just like put it into like, just think about these three things. Um, just kind of wrap it up. (laughs) (laughs) I like, 
I like ending a podcast. I, I don't do this all the time, but I, I like when I finish listening to a podcast, I'm like, oh, these are the things I am going to do. Um, so definitely what you just mentioned about like add a section on your chart um, to chart what your workout is and how you feel. Um, yeah. I think that's awesome. I am totally going to start doing that. I have no <laughs> idea why I haven't done that before. It's like, one of those things that when you hear it, you're like, oh, that's smart. Why didn't I? Yeah, I should just do that. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like when I learned about NFP for the first time, I was like, how did I not? Know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, chart your workouts. Um, and then another thing is be understanding of where you are in your cycle. Um, and, and make that part of your awareness as you are working out. Um, so if you have a really bad day, take a look at your chart and realize, oh, actually I probably had a bad day because I got different hormones going on and that's okay. Um, and then you want me to give a brief, like what the research says might be the best times for different things. Absolutely. Okay. So (laughs) of course, if you're on your period, you might want to do more gentle stuff. You actually could do strong strength and high intensity inner training, but I mean, you probably don't feel like doing it when you're on your period. So do what you want. Um, right after your period is the best time for strength and for high intensity interval training. Um, and then, or well, actually it gets better as you get to ovulation and sure. ovulation is the, really the best for that. And then of course, right after ovulation is when things start winding down and maybe you want to focus more on endurance. So long runs or, um, yeah, just, it's more endurance rather than strength training. Sure. And then right before your period, you want to ease into it, yoga, flexibility, Pilates, things like that. Um, and there are other people who are more focused on the research of that. Um, so definitely reach out to me if you want those uh, names. Uh, like I said, I'm more about the intuitive fitness piece of it. Um, but if you want a lot of the research, like the athlete type stuff, let me know. Awesome. Yeah. And so Jonna's contact information will be in the show notes, so you won't, uh, have to go searching for it. (laughs) We'll make it easy for you. Um, but yeah, this was so awesome. I am like really excited to start charting my workouts. (laughs) Let me know how it goes. I will. I will. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add before we close out? I don't think so. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks so much for listening. If you want to get in touch with Jonna or learn more about what she does, her information is in the show notes. I'd also like to ask you that if this podcast has been helpful to you and you enjoy the content that I've been creating, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I can be found at patreon.com slash charting. Uh, There are some special perks for just my Patreon community, including a brand new podcast that I'm going to be starting next month called Deep Dive, where we're going to be diving into uh, church documents on teachings like NFP, chastity, and sexuality and how that relates to our lives currently. So please join us on Patreon for that. As always, if you have any questions, comments, ideas for episodes, or just want to chat, reach out to me on Instagram or my email, and all, all of that is in the show notes. Until next time.